グループ企業様関係仕入れ先様とともに本年5月より実現したいことは私たちが準備している新型車をトヨタのバッテリー EV 専用車 BZ シリーズです。Toyota has been working on environmentally friendly vehicles for quite a time now, and they've come up with this new engine that's going to change the whole EV industry. And when it comes down to electric vehicles, things are a little different on Toyota's side. Unlike other EV automakers, it's been said multiple times by the company CEO that the company won't fully switch to EVs. Why is that so? Why Toyota doesn't want to fully switch to EVs when everyone is talking about them, and most importantly, what sort of new engine they're working on that could be a real game changer in the automotive industry? What exactly is cooking up in Toyota's garage? Let's find out in this video. Now, we all know that the electric vehicle's trend was set by Tesla in the early 2010s, and today there are many automobile manufacturers who are providing the citizens with a better and cleaner way of moving around from one place to another. These companies have spent millions and billions of dollars in order to come up with new EV designs and models for their customers. And in countries where EV adoption rate is high and people are still spending their money on those vehicles, Toyota is still in the top five when it comes to sales markets, even though Toyota has not fully switched to EV. So, why has the company not fully switched to EVs? The reasons that they've come up with are nothing but brilliant, and it seems like Toyota is definitely going to be successful if things turn out according to their plan. So, what are those reasons? Toyota is concerned that transitioning to all electric vehicles may be impractical in the near future. Outgoing CEO Akio Toyota believes that EVs are just overhyped and that having too many of them could be dangerous. According to him, the lack of supporting infrastructure, along with the high cost of EVs, makes mass adoption impossible. All of this is presently hidden from the public view because EVs account for only 1% or so of the world's car fleet. If the number of electric vehicles increases, the reality will gradually settle in. When EVs overwhelm the market, electricity consumption will be at the top of the list of issues to address. To meet the low demand created by EVs by 2030, the United States alone will require a 40% increase in power output. In other words, they must invest almost $100 billion in the current electrical supply chain. Although some parts of Europe and Asia currently have upgraded grids as a result of increased EV customer demand, it'll still be insufficient if every car owner chooses to go electric. Toyota's arguments do make a lot of sense. For starters, we don't have enough electricity to power EVs. Second, fossil fuels are the world's principal source of electricity. This means that increasing the number of EVs will not reduce emissions, but will just change the source. Based on Akio Toyota's declaration that carbon, not combustion engines, is the enemy, his detractors could all be wrong. According to general observations, global EV uptake is not uniform. Some markets, such as Europe and China, are moving quicker than others, such as the United States. Other markets, like Africa, are far behind, with little to no EV infrastructure. This disparity suggests that the world is not ready to pursue the all EV agenda as a roadblock. Toyota believes that going all electric will leave a sizable number of its consumers in the dark. No car maker has entered the global market more than Toyota, with over 10.5 million copies sold across 200 countries in 2021. The corporation has a large market share in all areas, particularly in underdeveloped countries with inadequate charging infrastructure. These regions cannot afford to build EV infrastructure by 2035. Furthermore, electric vehicles are prohibitively expensive. Government subsidies to encourage consumers to purchase EVs makes them slightly cheaper at the moment. Before we move on with the other reasons, make sure to subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, like this video as well. Now let's get back to the video. Another reason for Toyota not switching to fully electric vehicles is high cost and materials. For example, a 2022 Toyota Prius hybrid with an EPA rating of up to 56 mpg combined starts at about $25,000. That's about $17,000 less than the car maker's all electric BZ4X crossover. The batteries in electric vehicles are extremely expensive, and prices continue to rise due to inflation and increased demand for elements such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel, which are required to manufacture the battery cells. 
According to EV automobile experts, raw material costs for electric vehicles more than doubled during the coronavirus outbreak. According to the Metals Company, which is a Canadian startup, there is significantly insufficient supply of battery grade nickel, cobalt, and manganese sulfate to meet US EV ambitions by 2030. Even if all predicted nickel sulfate output from the United States and free trade agreement countries went into creating electric vehicles through 2030, the publicly traded mining business estimates that it would supply less than 60% of EV targets set by manufacturers throughout the time frame. Undoubtedly, the present chip shortage and supply chain concerns have increased the cost of all new automobiles, but even in this competitive market, electric vehicles appear to be out of reach for the middle-class consumers. According to Finance Buzz, the average cost of an electric vehicle is $56,437, while the average cost of a hybrid vehicle is $33,390, and the average cost of a gasoline-powered automobile is $42,804. There is undeniably a significant difference here. Meanwhile, Kelly Blue Book expects a new electric vehicle's average price to be much higher. According to KBB, the average price reached a new high of $66,000 in June. Clearly, EVs are far more expensive than gas-powered vehicles, and it's thousands of dollars at stake here, not hundreds. Until recently, American consumers could take advantage of the $7,500 EV tax credit. However, since the situation has deteriorated and most hybrids no longer qualify for tax incentives, interest in these vehicles has decreased. Furthermore, there are new hazards involved with purchasing an electric vehicle, such as EV charging constraints. However, Toyota did come up with a solution. But before we move on to that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, like this video as well. Now, let's look at what the solution is. We're talking about a brand new revolutionary hydrogen vehicle. You might have heard of Toyota Mirai, a hydrogen-powered vehicle that uses fuel cells in order to generate electricity. But for now, Toyota has come up with something completely different and they're calling it a new hydrogen combustion engine. So let's look at that now. Unlike other automobile manufacturers who have gone pretty much all electric, Toyota has something different to work on and it seems like they're going that route. The hydrogen combustion engine technology could possibly bring a revolution in the automotive industry. What's the deal with the hydrogen combustion engine? Hydrogen engines are a bit different than the usual combustion engines and they are also more environment friendly. These engines have longer ranges and don't need to be charged like electric vehicles. And what's interesting is that the eventual byproduct that comes out of it is not smoke or anything else, but water. That means no harmful pollutants are produced from such vehicles. How does it all work? Internal combustion engines powered by hydrogen operate similarly to regular gasoline or diesel engines. Instead of using fossil fuels, they generate power by combusting hydrogen. Because these engines can be modified from current internal combustion engines, they are an appealing choice for moving to a cleaner energy source. How Toyota is employing hydrogen engines in its vehicles? The Toyota Corolla Cross H2 concept automobile is powered by a new prototype hydrogen internal combustion engine. The hot 1.6-litre turbocharged three-cylinder engine seen in the GR Corolla and GR Yaris has been adapted to run on hydrogen. To begin, strong armoured fuel tanks are required to carry the highly flammable hydrogen technology developed by Toyota from its FCEV or fuel cell electric vehicle, the Miro. The engine receives reinforced valves and valve seats, stronger connecting rods and gas-only fuel injectors. The Cross HD concept, like a normal Corolla, seats five passengers and their staff. And not only this, but Toyota has been collaborating with Yamaha Motor to create a hydrogen fueled V8 engine, which is wonderful news for gearheads everywhere. Yamaha announced earlier this year that the 5.0-litre V8 engine would be based on the one used in the Lexus RC Coupe, with changes to the cylinder heads and fuel injectors, among other things. Yamaha claims 455 horsepower at 6800 rpm and 398 pounds-feet of torque at 3600 rpm. That's a little less than the original gasoline V8 on which it's based, but it's still fairly respectable. The 8 into 1 top-mounted exhaust manifold, which Yamaha claims provides a distinct high-frequency sound, is the most remarkable aspect of the hydrogen V8. And when it comes to filling up your hydrogen-powered vehicle, the job is not difficult at all. Filling up a hydrogen-powered car is exactly as simple, but it takes far less time because it is a gas rather than a liquid. 
if you've ever had a propane tank filled, you know how quick the process is. In fact, the new Toyota Yaris GRH2 takes only a minute and a half to entirely fill with hydrogen, which is far faster than filling the tank on the Toyota Camry with petrol. Pretty amazing, right? Let us know in the comments what you think about Toyota's new strategies in the automotive industry and their hydrogen-powered vehicles. If you enjoyed watching the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn that notification bell on so that you can always stay updated with our future uploads. Thanks for watching and see you next time.